the most distant human-made object in the universe, Voyager 1, has sent what could be its final message back to Earth after nearly half a century of exploring the vast unknown. This last transmission is nothing short of astonishing, leaving scientists and space enthusiasts alike in awe. What secrets lie within this final message? What does it mean for the future of space exploration? And how did a mission launched in the 1970s defy all odds to become one of humanity's greatest achievements? The ambitious beginnings of the Voyager mission. The story of Voyager begins in the 1970s, a time when the outer planets of our solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, were aligned in a rare configuration. This unique arrangement, which occurs only once every 175 years, presented an unprecedented opportunity. A single spacecraft could visit all four planets in sequence using gravity, assists to swing from one to the next. NASA, determined to seize this cosmic opportunity, launched what was initially called the Mariner Jupiter Saturn 1977 program, later renamed Voyager. The two Voyager craft, both launched in 1977, were built to last five years. They're now approaching 50 years of operation and are respectively over 15 and 12 billion miles away. They've left behind the influence of our star and entered interstellar space. These are the only spacecraft that have been there, Cummings marveled. Decades later, the craft and their antiquated computers have each encountered a number of glitches, which have been repeatedly remedied by a clever group of devoted Voyager engineers. The latest hurdle, however, could be serious. NASA reported that engineers were still working to fix a stubborn problem the agency identified in December. They can send messages to Voyager 1, but no science or engineering data is being sent back to Earth. There's an issue with a critical onboard computer, the flight data system. The space agency more recently received a memory readout from Voyager 1. At such a great distance, it takes nearly a day for a message from the craft to reach us, which the team is now scrutinizing for hints of a solution. The prolonged issue has space onlookers worried. The plan involved two spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, designed to explore Jupiter and Saturn with the potential to continue on to Uranus and Neptune if they survived the harsh conditions of space. Both probes were launched in 1977, just weeks apart. Voyager 2 on August 20th and Voyager 1 on September 5th. The numbering reflects the order in which they would reach Jupiter, not their launch dates. Each spacecraft was built to last about four years, but engineers added extra capabilities that might allow them to survive and travel to the far edge of the solar system, or even beyond. Little did they know that this, if everything goes well, scenario would turn into one of the most extraordinary space missions in history. The technology behind the Voyagers. By modern standards, the Voyager spacecraft might seem primitive, but in the mid 1970s, they were technological marvels. Each craft had a total of 69.63 kilobytes of computer memory, many times smaller than the size of a single smartphone photo today. This limited capacity forced engineers to devise careful strategies for storing, compressing, and transmitting data. The spacecraft relied on eight track style magnetic tape recorders to store data, ruggedized to survive the extreme radiation and temperature fluctuations of space. Communication with Earth depended on a high-gain parabolic antenna, which had to remain precisely oriented toward our planet. Each Voyager transmitted with a power of about 22 watts, but by the time the signals traveled billions of miles, they were so faint that NASA's Deep Space Network, DSN, had to use massive 70-meter antennas to sift them out from background noise. Powering the Voyagers were three radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, which converted heat from decaying plutonium into electricity. This eliminated the need for solar panels, which would have been impractical beyond Jupiter's orbit. Over time, the plutonium decayed, reducing the power output and forcing NASA to shut down non-essential instruments to conserve energy for critical systems. The Voyager missions changed our view of deep space. The Voyager missions, 
originally conceived to explore Jupiter and Saturn, have vastly exceeded their original two-planet itinerary. For Cummings and some of his Voyager colleagues, that was always the plan. After all, the craft are nuclear-powered. They wouldn't run out of fuel for decades. The biggest problem was getting it past the launch pad, the physicist said, recalling a number of failed launches. A lot of us had a goal of getting to interstellar space. Soon after launching, both craft made good time to Jupiter, venturing by the gas giant in 1979. They revealed the planet like never before. Scientists saw Jupiter's roiling atmosphere with vibrant belts of clouds traveling in alternate directions and teeming with giant storms, some bigger than Earth. But the Jovian moons were stars of the show, too. Besides volcano-blanketed Io, the mission captured views of ice-clad Europa, with giant cracks crisscrossing the surface. Intrigued planetary scientists have continued to investigate Europa and now suspect a briny ocean, reaching some 40 to 100 miles, 60 to 150 kilometers, down, sloshes beneath that icy surface. Another NASA probe, bound for Europa, will soon depart Earth. Both voyagers then continued to majestic Saturn. The craft spied astounding detail in the rings and revealed the nature of the strange Saturnian moons. Mimas, previously known to astronomers as just a little dot in the sky, had been walloped by something. It looked like the Death Star, Cummings said, referencing the moon-sized space station in Star Wars. The mission also introduced humanity to Titan. Voyager discovered it harbors a thick atmosphere and possibly seas of methane. Years later, researchers can't stay away. NASA will send a car-sized craft fitted with eight spinning rotors to the moon in 2028, a mission called Dragonfly. It will land on Titan's ice-covered dunes, an environment that might have resembled early Earth Jupiter. The first big reveal. In 1979, the Voyagers reached Jupiter, the first major milestone of their mission. The giant planet, more massive than all the other planets in the solar system combined, stunned scientists with its colossal magnetosphere, swirling clouds, and dozens of moons. The spacecraft captured images and measurements that far surpassed anything possible from Earth-based telescopes at the time. One of the most shocking discoveries was volcanic activity on Jupiter's moon, Io. Before Voyager, scientists had no idea that a moon could be so geologically active. Voyager 1's cameras captured actual plumes bursting from Io's surface, a result of the intense tidal forces generated by its gravitational tug-of-war with Jupiter and other moons. This was humanity's first direct observation of active volcanoes outside Earth. Another revelation came from Europa, another of Jupiter's moons. Voyager's images showed a smooth, cracked ice surface, leading scientists to suspect that a liquid water ocean might lie beneath. This discovery sparked new questions about the possibility of life in distant realms and laid the groundwork for future missions like Galileo and Europa Clipper. Saturn, rings, moons, and a fateful decision. After Jupiter, the Voyagers continued deeper into the solar system, reaching Saturn in quick succession, Voyager 1 in 1980 and Voyager 2 in 1981. Saturn's iconic ring system was a major focus, and the spacecraft captured high-resolution images that revealed thousands of narrow ringlets with intricate structures like spokes, braids, and scalloped edges. But the most pivotal moment came when Voyager 1 made a close flyby of Titan. Saturn's largest moon, Titan's thick, opaque atmosphere, rich in nitrogen and methane, fascinated scientists. However, this maneuver altered Voyager 1's trajectory, flinging it out of the plane of the solar system and preventing it from visiting Uranus and Neptune. Mission planners had to choose between sacrificing Voyager 1's chance to explore more planets or gathering critical data on Titan they chose Titan, a decision that would pay off decades later with the Cassini-Huygens mission.
Voyager 2, meanwhile, took a different path, allowing it to continue on to Uranus and Neptune. Its observations of Saturn's moon Mimas, nicknamed the Death Star Moon, due to its giant crater, and the planet's complex ring system kept scientists busy for years. Uranus and Neptune into the unknown. In January 1986, Voyager 2 reached Uranus, the seventh planet from the Sun. Uranus, tilted about 98 degrees on its side, presented a unique challenge. The spacecraft revealed that Uranus is an ice giant, with large amounts of water, methane, and ammonia beneath its cloud tops. Its magnetic field was also bizarre, tilted and offset from the planet's center, creating a twisted magnetosphere. Voyager 2's flyby of Neptune in August 1989 marked the culmination of the original Grand Tour. Neptune, 30 times farther from the Sun than Earth, surprised scientists with its fast winds and the Great Dark Spot, a storm resembling Jupiter's Great Red Spot. But the biggest surprise was Triton, Neptune's largest moon, which was found to have active cryovolcanoes venting nitrogen gas, a discovery no one had anticipated beyond the planets, into interstellar space. After completing their planetary flybys, the Voyagers embarked on a new mission, exploring the boundary between the Sun's influence and interstellar space. In August 2012, Voyager 1 became the first human-made object to cross the heliopause, the boundary where the solar wind gives way to the interstellar medium. Six years later, in November 2018, Voyager 2 followed suit. The data from these crossings surprised scientists. The temperature in the boundary region was much lower than expected, and the interstellar magnetic field was stronger than predicted. The Voyagers also detected a curious cosmic hum at around 3 kHz, possibly caused by background plasma vibrations in interstellar space. The final message and the future. By the 2020s, the Voyagers were operating far beyond their expected lifespans. In November 2023, Voyager 1 experienced a memory failure, rendering it unable to send coherent data. After months of painstaking efforts, engineers successfully re-uploaded essential code in April 2024, restoring communication. This remarkable fix highlights the ingenuity and dedication of the Voyager team. However, time is running out. The RTGs are steadily losing power, and NASA expects to begin a phased shutdown of major subsystems around 2025. Eventually, the Voyagers will fall silent, but their legacy will endure. At this juncture, the Voyager craft took disparate paths through the solar system. Voyager 1 continued toward the far reaches of our cosmic neighborhood, while Voyager 2 would first make historic swoops by Uranus and Neptune, the ice giants. Again, the moons were stars. For the first time, scientists like Cummings saw worlds like Uranus's icy, grooved moon Miranda. And then there was Neptune's bizarre moon Triton, a world some three billion miles away. Voyager 2 detected extreme surface temperatures of minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 235 degrees Celsius, on this frozen realm. Even so, the moon still shot out miles-high plumes of icy material from geysers. The Golden Records, a message to the stars. One of the most enduring aspects of the Voyager mission is the Golden Records, 12-inch gold-plated copper discs attached to each spacecraft. These records contain sounds, images, and music from Earth, intended to tell the story of our planet to any extraterrestrial intelligence that might find them. While the likelihood of the records being discovered is minuscule, they stand as a testament to humanity's curiosity and hope. The Voyager's Cosmic Journey The Voyagers have left the solar system in terms of the sun's magnetic influence, but they won't truly exit the solar system for tens of thousands of years when they pass beyond the Oort cloud. In about 40,000 years, Voyager 1 may drift within 1.7 light-years of a star in Ursa Minor, while Voyager 2 could come close to Ross 248. For now, 
The voyagers continue their one-way journey through the cosmic sea, carrying our golden greetings to the stars. Their final message to Earth is a reminder of how far we've come and how much more there is to explore. Thanks for watching another episode. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.